So, Nick, what I love talking to you about is the view from the C-suite. Um, how are we doing? How's the global economy? I think things Where's pretty the good. Bad? If you, if you good? think about right now, there's a day. Mm -hmm. Holidays are coming. Skywalker's rising. You know, Although and, apparently badly and, and no one wants to see it. Yeah, but. well, I don't know. I bet you go. Uh, uh, yeah, I do. I'm, go, I'm going to. I'm going okay. to. We want to see what happens with Bray, right? And, and then I think, uh, at least right mm -hmm. now, the, uh, the action with the tariffs, the phase one, makes it more positive. I think that changes a little bit. The National Association of Manufacturers, who has been involved in this and worries about this a lot, is very positive about this. I think the tariffs themselves, you can talk a lot about what we didn't get and, and got, but in reality, I think this was kind of a binary change into a positive, which people could have thought could have been a negative. For me, I think it's, it's uh, some kind of... Uh, confidence builder in the current strategy. And the administration started out by saying, we're going to split commercial considerations in tariffs from strategic. And that's the way they went forward. Lighthouser himself said, I'm doing a commercial deal and I'm worried about American jobs. When the, when the administration and the Congress denounced uh, uh, China over the, uh, the Hong Kong protesters, I was a little worried. I think a lot of people worried that they were coming together, making it more difficult to do a deal. But it's now clear they can walk and chew gum at the same time. What does the recovery look like from here, though? There's a lot of debate about this was clearly not a normal cycle in a lot of different ways. So the trajectory from here, it's been a relatively shallow downturn. So do you see that much upside? Uh, well, you know, I, I've been in the job more than a decade, and I don't know what a normal one looks like, really. You know, they're all different. But, but, look, but look at this. I think we're seeing some positives from our perspective. We see the auto market being very strong. I mean, we repair cars, and cars are getting more complex, and therefore they, the, the customers that we have wanna and want to need implements, the kinds of implements we make, either based on data or hand tools, to attack that complexity. So we're investing in this going forward. We maybe we don't give guidance, so maybe this quarter will be boom or not necessarily just you know, more tepid. But in fact, we see the upward trend in the American market very positively. Mm -hmm. American market in our quarter, the American market was up uh, fairly strongly, you know, mid single digits or mid single digits, and Europe was down. So what we're seeing is Europe coming off the bubble yeah. and the U.S. pretty strong. You have had some disappointing organic sales growth in your tools group, though, recently. What does that stem from? Is that mostly international, and, and how do you fix well, that? Well, it's, it's it, last quarter. It, generally, we've seen the comeback of the U.S. market and international, and part of it is you have to know the characteristics of our business. Uh, the, the second biggest market for us is the U.K. Oh. So, so oh, customers, rough. which are technicians, are saying, <laughs> gee, I don't, want to I don't want to invest in long payback items. I want to keep them short term. And that's what you see. And that tends to give a downturn. And that's overhanging that business. The other side of that business is, you know, we sell through, um, through uh, franchisees, one-on-one -on -one sales, direct sales to the actual end user. And as the product gets more complex, that's a capacity issue. Hmm. because you have to take more time to sell them. So you have to aid those frontline salesmen in terms of training and capabilities to be able to sell those more complicated products. Some of our laptops for cars wield 130 billion record databases, and they have to explain that to the technician. Now, this is a great thing for us because the best salesman is up close and personal. The best demand for our products is when the cars get more complex. But does it create a capacity? Given some uh, of those trends and the right. macro dynamics, do you worry at all about the financial health of your franchisees? Are they able to manage well through this period? Well, they seem to be, right now, they seem to be financially more healthy than we've ever seen. And I lived through the worst recession of my lifetime. You know, when people were saying we ought to put, we ought to put money in the mattresses in 2009, people were really worried about the ongoing capability of our system, and yet we didn't have problems. So for next year in terms of, say, yes. the labor market, like, are you going to be hiring and or wa uh, raising wages? Can you give me some insight? Well, we've raised wages 3% every year in the United States since the recession. So we'll probably consider it, continue that policy. We just believe that's an important thing to share with our mm -hmm. employees. We're hiring right now because we, we, we need that capacity to, to support that higher complexity. And we're investing. We just opened a new headquarters in California for our software business that supports that complexity. Hmm. Do, are, how's it like to find workers? Like, are you, are you Well, able? it's a, uh, it, it is a difficult thing. It's one of the manufacturers have difficulty. Snap-on, because the Snap, I like to think is people like to work at Snap-on, and I think they do, because the Snap-on brand is the outward sign of the pride and dignity workers take in their profession. So people gravitate toward us. But in general, manufacturing has a 500,000 
jobs going begging. And why the difficulty is there is, one, we don't train them correctly. It's more difficult to train. So manufacturers and community colleges have to get together and try to match that training. And secondly, people look at manufacturing jobs as the consolation prize of our society. Most, many people look at this as what other people's kids do. And so manufacturing has a PR problem. We're no longer dark, dumb, and dirty. The people who are in our factories are smart and capable. So do you feel like you're competing with jobs for, with other industries, whether that's retail services versus with other manufacturers? Sure, sure. I think, I want to emphasize, I think Snap-on with our brand name are okay, but, but of 250,000 manufacturers, 247,000 are small. They have difficulty finding people, and they are competing like that because even even though the jobs, 90% of Americans say manufacturing is essential for our future, but only 30% would say that want their children to be in it. Even though these jobs create the ability to keep your family warm and safe and dry and have pride and dignity. So uh, going forward next year, what's the single biggest risk to your business, the thing that keeps you up at night that you stress about? A lot of people ask me what keeps me up at night. I, I said ESPN, you know, I almost got fired over that once. But, but the thing is, I, I think, the thing is, I, let me just talk about the manufacturers. The manufacturers say the one thing that makes it difficult is to find skilled labor you put on it. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing they worry about. The second thing they worry about is the trade war. And so the trade war has gotten better, not fixed, but the idea of reducing some of the tariffs and getting theoretically more access to the Chinese market, which is huge now, mm -hmm. and it was the real reason to have the trade war in the first place is making people feel better, it makes us feel better. But do you feel yes. like the, tr the trade deal as it currently is construed actually gives you that access to the well, Chinese market? Well, at least it, at, we don't know. We don't know what the deal It's 86 pages in Chinese. I don't think I know. But I just came back from, I go to Asia six times a year. And so I just came back from there, and I think this trade war will be viewed positively, uh, this, this action will be viewed positively. If you read the South China Morning Post or the Straits Times, they looked at it positively. Mm -hmm. So I think at least it's a, it's a binary. It looked like they were diverging. Now they seem to have come together. So at least directionally, this is a positive. Certainly everything isn't going to be yeah. fixed.